I thought this uh, passage, uh, this gospel story, the parable, the sheep and the goats, as it is known, might be worth looking at briefly. What is the difference between the sheep and the goats? That is, the people that are on Jesus' right-hand side and the people on Jesus' left. What's the difference? Some of you, knowing this parable really well, you're going to look and say, well, that's a pretty obvious question. The people on Jesus' right, they do things. They do the corporal works of mercy. And the people on Jesus' left, not so much. By the way, just for the record, I'm going to be gesturing over here. You guys are not goats, okay? All right, just, just, just so you know. And, and I hope you guys are sheep. But anyway, uh, so I, I know that's the obvious answer, but I think there's more to it than that. Um, take a look at how this story unfolds. You don't get it directly from the story, but it seems to be implied that this, these groups, they've been divided, and they do not know why. They don't know right away what group they're in. And in other words, I would picture this as somebody walking down, not saying, okay, you're a good person, you go over here, you're a lousy person, you go over here. I don't think that's what happened. I think somehow they just got divided into two groups. So that when Jesus starts and addresses the people on his right, and he says, hey, come you, um, are blessed of my father, and, you know, inherit the kingdom. They must be thinking, wow, okay, this is good. This is really good. But then I wonder if their next thought is, it, is not quite as happy because Jesus goes on to tell them why. He says, well, you did all these things for me. You, I was hungry, you gave me something to drink. I was, or I was, you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. And they might be thinking in their head, I never did that. Like, I never did that. I never gave the Lord Jesus food, drink, welcomed them. I never did any of that stuff. And I'm just wondering if they're standing there going like, "Uh uh-oh, I'm in the wrong group. And it seems to be something that's almost collective. Because if you notice what happens after Jesus finishes, they say back to him, "Uh, Jesus, we're a little confused. When did we do this? When did we see you hungry and give you something to drink? When we do all these things you said we did? They don't know. And Jesus offers that terrific line, hey, you did it to the least of these, my brethren. You did it to other people, and that means you did it to me. And off they go. And then Jesus turns to the other group. Not a good thing, you know. Depart from me, you accursed. Oops. And then he goes on to tell them why. And again, I'm thinking people in that group are pretty confused. Because as Jesus goes through the reason why they're getting booted out, they're thinking to themselves, wait, I never, this isn't correct. Jesus, what you are saying is factually wrong. I never had the opportunity to give you something to eat. I mean, I never turned you down. See, I'm picturing the first group thinking to themselves, yeah, Jesus, we... Yeah, we help other people, but we never help to you. And I'm thinking this other group is thinking to themselves, yeah, I, I, we never did any of that feeding the hungry sort of thing. But Jesus, if it had been you, if you had shown up, oh, absolutely, of course we would have helped you. See, the difference between these two groups to me is one of focus. I think this group that, that is on Jesus' is right their focus is outward. They're not looking for a reward. They're not doing, you know, they're not trying to earn anything. They are just focused out on other people. They see a need. They do what they can to help out. These people over here strike me as that they are focused inward. Just, it's about them. Because even in their excuse, Jesus, if it had been you, of course we would have helped. But why? It wouldn't have been for Jesus' sake. It would have been for theirs. They'd be like, oh, hey, yeah, we should help Jesus because if you help Jesus, then, you know, he's going to help you back. In other words, they would have helped him only for what it would have gotten them. 
Their focus was all internal. It was all on them. I think that's the difference. And what's that got to do with us? Well, if I can offer you one suggestion, Advent starts next week, a lead up to Christmas. You might ask yourself, the stuff you've already planned or the stuff that's going to come up, what is going to be your focus during Advent and Christmas? Are you going to focus on other people or are you going to focus on yourself? If I could encourage you, this isn't as quite an easy question as it might seem. Some people would just say, well, it's the season of giving. Of course, we'll be focused outwardly, and that will be the tendency. But do keep in mind that you can appear to be focused outward and still not be. There are people who buy gifts, not really for the other person, but they buy the gift because what it might get them. They want to they wanna be there when the gift gets opened and they get all these accolades about, oh, what a clever gift, how beautifully wrapped it is, you know, any, things like that. They want those accolades, and so they're giving the gift, really, so that they can receive something. And some people, Christmas is a bit of a business transaction. I'm going to spend this much money on gifts, expecting this much in gifts in return. And if I play my cards right, what I get will be bigger than what I give. I hope none of you do that, but it can be a temptation. People that even give of their time baking things like that, their time and their talents. Again, it can be a wonderful gesture to other people. Here is this, you know, my traditional pie that I, I give out to my friends, and people might well look forward to it and appreciate the gift that that is. But again, it can't be done for selfish reasons. So I just encourage you, let's apply this parable to Advent, to the lead up to Christmas. Because certainly, I don't think I have to convince you of this, if heading towards Christmas, you and I keep our focus out on other people, come Christmas Day and the season of Christmas that follows, we will look back and realize, oh, I had a wonderful Christmas. I think if we become like the goats, that other group, I don't think Christmas is a wonderful season. I think we get tired of it and we get crank cranky and all that sort of stuff, but we can make Christmas a joyous season simply by focusing on others.